Hello everybody and welcome back to Birthdays the Beginning, where last time we had a little bit of uh, trouble with the Ichthyos dagger, but now we have it, so we are looking to build on our reptilian kingdom and uh, get towards some dinos maybe. So let's have a look. So it's Navi is saying that a new organism has taken its first steps onto land. They grow up so fast. The noble amphibian bound to its watery domain until the day comes when it adapts to land and becomes a reptile. Life's a trip. What does evolution even mean? What's meant to be will be. Is it all predetermined? So I must birth Dimetrodon. A location with little water should be fine, but check game info for details. So we do have like a deserty area. I don't know whether it means a little water or just little water. I'm quite impressed that I have spiders in my world. I didn't have those in my test world, so I'm like, yay, I got spiders. It's interesting how every world is a little different. Um, obviously, unless you're going completely the completionist route, you're going to always have different kinds of animals depending on how you've raised and lowered the temperature, and I think that's really cool. Okay, so let's have a look at what this dude needs then. This dude needs 25 degrees, lowlands, low moisture, and a bunch of ichthyostega. Right, well, I would say, I want to just check Ichthyostega and just make sure Ichthyostega will be okay at 25 degrees. It doesn't look like it needs to be that, uh, 63, so it would be fine over here. Like, we have plenty of spaces where it's, um, it's low moisture, so we're fine with that. I do try and I will try and keep this area as a dry area because sometimes things do need a bit of a drier place to live. So, okay, let's go and uh, check out Theostega and just make sure it's okay. We it's all the way down here somewhere. Ichthyostega. All these cool fish I got. Okay, so it would like me to keep the temperature between seventeen and forty-three degrees. And it would like a certain amount of moisture so it can just live by the river, so that's fine. Yeah, it's got good vitality, good fertility, adaptation size, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that should be okay, uh, even if I do lower the temperature a little. So I'll go build up my mountains a little bit and lower the temperature down. So I've got this 25 degrees that I need. So we can maybe kill two birds with one stone there if we do that first. Doobie-doo. Over we go. We can zoom, look. I can zoom him. That's with the, uh, using the left trigger. So I was doing a little bit of building around here. And uh, I had to stop because it was lowering the temperature too much. But now I want the temperature a bit lower. I can carry on a bit. I'm just going to sort of step this up. A little bit at a time, like. And we'll just lower it around here. We're nearly at our 25 degrees already though. I can only really afford to have one more. I'll have a little step here, like just a little one, like that. 25. I'll just do one more just because I want it to be a bit higher than that. And let's zoom out. Oh, so that's starting to look a lot nicer, isn't it? My little highland mountain in the sort of corner there. I like. I like a lot. I can see why you have to start zooming out. That cube starts to get quite big. Okay, so let's start time. And see what happens. I'm looking, ideally, for the Ichthyostega population to rise. If it doesn't, then I need to look at why it's not. I don't see a reason for it not to. It's just staying stable. I might have to have a look at this. Oh no, it's rising. Okay, come on, Nick It wanted the temperature lower. Almost certainly wanted the temperature lower. Oh, I've lost one, but the Ichthyostega's doing well. Let's fast forward it a bit. I feel a bit more confident that Ichthyostega's doing okay now. We're at 26 degrees. A couple of things have uh, gone extinct, but that happens. Come on. We're at an air temperature of 25 now and we have lots of ichthyostega. So there's no reason 
that they shouldn't be spawning now. Come on, we'll fast forward it a little more and then I will go and see why we're not getting our new thing. Right. So it wants Dimetrodon, wants 25 degree lowlands. We've got loads of lowlands there. Um, the moisture might be a bit much. Oh, it wants 58,000 Ichthyostega. All right, we need to keep going then. Okay, that's why. Keep going, fast forward. More Ichthyostega, please. What's going down? Now I can't even see it. Come on, Ichthyostega. Yay! It was going up in the background, I guess. We have Dimetrodon. I guess it was meant to be. I wonder what would happen if the environment changed drastically. The birth of dinosaurs is nearly here. Yay, dinosaurs! They're pretty similar to reptiles, so you'll need to birth Eero Eoraptor. Sorry. It's a two-legged dinosaur that emerged after Dimetrodon, when the climate got a lot hotter. It seems Eoraptor hunted in packs too. You need to raise the temperature to birth one. Refer to game info to explore your options. Okay. It wants 40 degree temperature, so we're gonna really have to raise it up. Uh, moisture 4 to 70, so pretty much anything. Minimum one dimetrodon has appeared previously, so we're okay as long as it has appeared previously, which it has. So let's go make some dinosaurs. That's not too bad for episode three. Episode three on the third day we made dinosaurs. Okay. So let's get back into the world and let's go and raise that temperature and capture the Dimetrodon before it goes extinct because it probably will as soon as I start raising this temperature right up. Look at all these lovely trees. As soon as you cool the temperature down, you get a lot of trees. Oops, I did not mean to do that. There you go. Right, so here's our Dimetrodon. Doesn't he look cool? He looks like a little dinosaur already. But we're gonna extinct you almost straight away. Sorry, dude. And we're gonna want this uh, temperature to be right the way up, so I'll just grab a few things here. There's our Ichthyostega. So these are our little dinosaur precursors. Take a good look. They won't be here for long. And uh, we need to make the sea probably a little bit deeper and a little bit bigger, I would say. So I'm going to maybe expand the sea right into this corner and we can make a big deep sort of ocean over here. Yeah, let's just do just do a cursor that big and we'll just go down all the way. Because I'm I'm wanting to keep that corner uh, that was already quite dry. I want to keep that as dry as I can. Ah, we're at 40. Right, so let's go back out into macro mode. And see. Didn't really need to do that. Um, and see what happens when we raise this temperature. Go! And also fast forward, seems as I ate all that energy. Diplocorlus. All sorts of interesting things. Okay, let's go and see what that is because uh, just in case it's something that only happens at a certain air temperature and then we never see it again. We're swimming around in the sea. Okay. Over here. I see you. Where did he go? He's here somewhere. Oh, look! He's like a little cool amphibian thing. Well, I'm glad I went to see you. Hello. I don't think I had you in my previous playthrough either. Unfortunately, I'm finding it very difficult to capture him. I might need to do that in view mode or something. Oh no, here he goes. Hello. Let's 
Looks like some sort of uh, some sort of axolotl precursor or something. Pretty cool. I'm probably completely wrong with that. I I probably completely made that up, by the way. Anyone who's like watching this and is like totally into uh, evolutionary biology and knows everything about it. Um, yeah, it's probably completely wrong. There's probably actually a lot in this game that's not quite right, but I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I just like the pretty dinosaurs. Don't judge me. Okay. Not that we've got any pretty dinosaurs yet. Let's keep going. Get this air temperature up. We're only at 27. It's going to take a little while for it to all uh, get up to 40 degrees. Let's just watch this air, this air temperature rise, 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 rise. We've got Helophilium. Heliophilium. Now, th I, the thing is, because the air temperature is rising, these things may go extinct, which is why I'm pulling myself back in to capture them each time. And he's all the way up in the corner over there. Uh, there we go. Ah, it's a coral. Hello you. A coral that lives among the Cyclomedusa in warm shallows. So it likes the warm temperature, but it wouldn't probably like it as it gets hot. It'll probably then die out. So that's why it's important to keep coming in every time you see something. And capture it, because I don't think a lot of this stuff is going to um, continue to survive. We've got Stegophon. Okay, let's go and see what that is. I wonder where it is. Oh, we're in the cube again. Ah, it's scary. Okay, so we want to go in this direction. So there's something over here that's new. Oh, it looks like a flower. How very lovely. The spiders still seem to be doing all right. Go, spiders. Short grass that glow grows in hot climates. It prospered for a long time after the appearance of Dimetrodon. See, so some of these things basically won't, um, whatever the conditions, they actually won't come until a certain point, like a certain animal has been birthed or something. And then, you know, you still need to play around with the temperatures because they might be like, this appears when it's really cool, but after T-Rex or something like that. So to do a completionist uh, run, you're going to have to do all sorts, I imagine. Uh, but it's still cool. And I imagine that what I would probably do is go into free play and maybe try and do a, a catch them all if uh, you guys are still interested after I've played through this and got the general bearings of what's happening. I just want to play through this and just follow the tutorial instructions, see what I what I get and what interesting sort of land I make. But uh, I might do like a, a gotta catch them all a bit later. I don't like doing that with a time limit though. Kind of ruins it for me. Okay. So now we have caught that. Let's uh, keep going. The temperature is still going up. Stegophyton. Is that not what we just got? Eoraptor! Yay! Finally it's born. Happy birthday at last. The world of dinosaurs I always dreamed of. You can either capture it and return to your world or you can enjoy this world a little longer. Well, I think I'm going to go capture it. It's up to you. Definitely for this sort of let's play. I think you guys want to see all the cool dinosaurs, don't you? You don't want me messing around. Not capturing Eoraptor. Okay, so Eoraptor is the first dinosaur. It appeared in hot climates after the propagation of its prey, Dimetrodon. It stands on two legs and hunts in packs. So it's kind of the first little raptor, really. So I chose to capture it. It's a little sad, but I understand. After all, you have your own world. Episode clear. And I think we probably did it within the time. But we didn't capture everything and we didn't... Uh, we didn't clear it without using a seed of evolution, unfortunately, because I had to get it for the Ichthyr... 
You know the one, Ichthus Steg Stegadon or something. Oh, I don't know his name anymore. I have to read it, otherwise I can't say it. But to get the, the precursor dinosaur, I had to use the Seed of Evolution. But now we're back in the cave. I feel like I've only been here a moment, and yet it feels much longer. Just how much time has passed, really? It's too dark in here to make sense of things. I should go outside. I don't know why, but as I headed towards the exit, I had a hunch that something bad was about to happen. Oh no, it's a dinosaur! See, I knew it, Mr. Dinosaur. Don't look at me like that. Who do you think created you anyway? I ran back into the cave before I could say any of that. So basically, Navi, you have messed my entire world up. Thank you so much. So now I've got to sort it all out. Clearly, I was in over my head. So now we have a huge cube. What's wrong? You look terrible. Just kidding. It doesn't actually feel nice to return to a world that's filled with dinosaurs. No, not really. I can't really give you the details, but it seems this world and your world are linked. And you come from a world of humans. In short, if you manage to birth humans in this world, you might be able to return to your world. Or I could have just not gone in the cave in the first place. Recreate the age of dinosaurs, and the age of mammals will follow. Birth the ancestor of man, Australopithecus. <laughs> oh, I love you, game. You have such good names for me to pronounce. Before you start, I'll give you these two items, a large rain cloud and intense sunlight. I like to try not to use the items, but sometimes I think I might have to. These are stronger version of small rain cloud and strong sunlight. Also, the land has gotten bigger, so be wary of the change in temperature. See, I'm definitely thinking I could expand my mountains back into the big, like, upland mountain range sort of thing going on. Expand my sea out to the, uh... Well, as we're looking at it, to the right-hand corner. I think that'd be pretty cool. But obviously, because the land's gotten bigger, it's going to be uh, very, very different to the temperature. It's going to really change the temperature. It's going to be going down to 31. So Navi said, looks like you and me are destined to be together for a while. And then again, that's only because I made you the chosen one. Really, I am the chosen one. Since we've come this far, I'd like you to stay with me a little while longer. That being said, I suppose I should tell you the truth. My goal is to birth civilization into this world. That's why I'm tracking the birth of life in the course of evolution. Our next goal is to recreate the age of dinosaurs. You'll need to raise the temperature to do that. Yes, I had, I had figured. If you use global warming, you can easily raise the temperature, but you can only use it once, so think carefully before you make a decision. At any rate, I'd like you to use global warming just this once to prepare for the age of dinosaurs. Okay, thank you very much. Let's do it then, shall we? Let's get this uh, global warming thingy going. Well, I have quite a few of them, actually. Global warming permanently raises the average temperature in the cube. It may appear when a lot of snow covers the cube. Done. Global warming. Global warming and cooling are useful when you want to change the temperature without changing the terrain. Well, that at least does a couple of degrees worth of, uh, of climate change for us. So that's good. That's a little bit less of terrain we need to do. All right, the stage is set. Time to bring out the star of the show. Tyrannosaurus. This life form is said to be the supreme dinosaur. You'll need the perfect temperature, the ideal location, and a plentiful food source. Refer to game info to prepare the environment. Now, that might sound really easy. It has a lot of steps to it, which I shall endeavour to explain to you. But I might have to go over into the next episode as well with this, because it's going to take a while. So number one thing that we need to get okay and we're gonna ignore the temperature at the moment ignore everything else we need to try and get the velociraptor first I would say and to do that let's have a little look at the conditions that the velociraptor might need so we're gonna go find him in the library to go to tree mode for this 
And Velociraptor is actually this one. So he's the direct uh, ancestor of the he's a, the Eoraptor and the Tyrannosaurus. He is the link between the two, the Velociraptor. We also need the Pliosaur, or Pliosaur, I'm not sure how you say that, which is da, 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 over. I have to find him first. Hang on. Ah, over here, right? So the plan basically is that we need to get these two. Okay, so the, so we're going to start just focusing on the Velociraptor, and then I'll come back and have another look because by the time I done the Velociraptor I'm going to have forgotten all of that anyway. So we'll just make the world nice for Velociraptors. So Velociraptors would like the world to be at least 39 degrees hot and they would like 10 to 64 percent moisture. So I do have a, some drier lands that they could um, possibly birth in. So we just need to try and get the temperature up first and get these guys um, and that's it really. That's going to be the first thing we'll do. We'll see if we can get a Velociraptor to spawn. So to do that, we're going to need to do lots and lots and lots. We'll see how big we can make our cursor now. Quite big. Okay, so now as you can see, I have made a large patch of sea, of seabed, and we have now got the temperature up to 40 whole degrees. Um, I might just do a little bit of like shaping around here make it a little bit less like boring because it's pretty boring isn't it maybe like that so we've got a bit of a, a bit of a shoreline going on there maybe just a little little doofer down there or something just to make it so it's not like oh I hate it when it's just boring straight lines and everything like over there is pretty bad as well but we will get there with it I will make it all pretty in shaped so if we go out to um, our mode, you can see it's, it's still a little bit uh, un ungainly there. I could do a shaping it a little bit more. We could do it making some more mountains and things as well. So I'll probably deepen the sea that I've made and eventually make some uh, some high ground there as well. I'm actually quite liking keeping my pyramid. It looks like, like some ancient civilization. So if came to earth maybe aliens or something came to earth and then they like made a big pyramid and left it there for all time interesting interesting creation story that one okay so we've got our eoraptor and now uh, we have changed the temperature so that it is now a good temperature for velociraptors so i'm going to start time and see if any appear most things are going extinct and that's to be expected but Aeroraptor's doing well. Aeroraptor's doing very well. And we've got Diphelia. So let's go and have a look at what that is. Because again, it's a big change to air temperature. So it's... As it comes up... Um, it, oh, it already is actually sitting at 40. I always worry that something that... Uh, comes about at like 38 degrees, might then go extinct by the time it gets to 40, so I've got to be a bit careful with that. We're in the water, in the deep water. Okay, so what is this new thing that we have spawned? Looks to be something that lives up high. Is it this tree? No. It's this little leafy thing. I always get so excited when we find a new thing and that's like, yeah, it's just this little thing. It looks a bit like clover. Diphelia. Okay, very nice. Let's go and see if we can make any uh, velociraptors. Go, make us velociraptors. So we've got a few things still dying out because they need the cooler climate. Aeroraptor is doing well. Ichthyosteca is actually doing quite well. I thought it would do badly. Come on. Give me some Velociraptors. 
Okay, so we've got this another new thing. So I need to go and capture it before it goes extinct again. As usual. Where are you? Oh, you're a flying thing. Wow. That's super cool. You're my first flying dinosaur. And that is uh, Eudemorphodon. And it is a reptile that evolved wings and powered flight. Uh, it appeared as Eoraptor was propagating the land. So one of the really, really early dinosaurs. Very cool. It's now 39 degrees. So I'm thinking we need a little tiny bit more C just to prop the temperature up a little bit more. Loads of stromats, uh, stromatolites in here. Okay, so let's just pull these down a bit. Because I've made so much shallows, so they're doing really well in those. Okay, well that seems to have pulled the temperature up a little bit. So we'll just uh, go back out to macro mode. Carry on a little bit and see if we can get a thing. Look, look at the desert I'm making. It's so cool. Okay, I've got another new thing. I know I'm quite bad at going to capture every new thing, but I don't want to miss them. They could so easily go extinct in this fragile little ecosystem. Don't tell me it's another plant. Oh no, it's a little tiny creepy crawly reptile thing. Hello you. Paramisotriton, I imagine you are called. This spot-tailed warty newt is adapted for increased temperatures. It appeared as Eoraptor began to increase in number. Lovely. I still think we need to leave it a little bit longer. I think my little desert there is pretty cool. I'm happy with that. Come on, are you gonna give me? Ha ha ha! Velociraptor, hello! Oh gee, everything, everything in the world is suddenly appearing now. The Velociraptor's here. I'm guessing we've got a good. Uh, the temperature's still staying at 39. I need it to go, to be up a little bit more than that. I think. I want to head for kind of a 41, 42 degree temperature. Okay, so where's my new guys? Oh, all the way over here. Okay. Zoom. Zoom. And zoom and get these uh, shinies. I'm sorry for any of you that motion sick there. I probably should stop doing that for that reason. I just wanted to show you that I can zoom over the map, you see. But yeah, I don't want any of you to feel ill just, just to make my, my job quicker. So I will just try and run at a normal speed. I know there are a lot of people that have trouble with games like this because of, of motion sickness. It's quite interesting. Not interesting for them, I'm sure it's horrible for them, but interesting that a game can, can give you that sort of effect. Okay, let's go and get our new things now. They are over this direction. Towards the edge, it looks like there's a little tiny dinosaur over there. It might be him. Or it might not be, it might just be something random, like a plant. I think I went past it, actually. I know, I know, I should make the, the mini-map uh, bigger and stuff. Aha, it's a tree! It's a little tiny tree. That is equus equisetum, I'm going to say. That is how it's pronounced. But we do need to go and find our little velociraptors, so is that one over there? Is it like I can see a little tiny white dinosaur just over here. Oh look at him! Look at his little spotty it looks like a tiny cow or something. Hello you. 
Look at that. Like it almost like I don't know, a little tiny chicken or something. He's like got weird colours, definitely. Didn't expect a Velociraptor to look like that. To have those colours. But I think he's cool. I think he's very cool. Okay. So now we have the Velociraptor. We can move on to the Pleosaur. So let's go and have a look at that in the library now. Okay, so it says a long-necked dinosaur that appears as Eoraptor and Stegosaurus were propagating. It preys on fish in very hot seas. So, to get a Pleosaur, you need a Stegosaur. So Stegosaurus is needed before we can even think about getting this guy. So... A herbivorous dinosaur that has plates on its back never competed with Brachiosaurus or Triceratops for food. No, no. This is a Triceratops here. A herbivorous dinosaur known for its prominent horns, the plants it consumes grow to shorter heights than those consumed by Brachiosaurus. So it seems like Brachiosaurus has the high stuff, um, yeah, the stuff that's up high, and the Stegosaurus has the stuff that's down low. So maybe... You have the stuff in the middle? Not sure. But anyway, all of these dinosaurs need birth temperatures of between sort of 41 to 51. So I would probably try and head for a little bit of a higher temperature again. Maybe try and get it up to 43, 44. So let's go and make some more C, shall we? Because, uh, you know, this guy's going to need some sea to swim in too. Going to need some sea to swim in. So you may as well make some more sea and get the temperature up. So. The answer to a lot of this seems to be just make more sea. Make more sea. Make some more sea. But we'll get these shallows into proper sea. Because that'll be somewhere for our new pleosaur to live when it finally comes around which I'm not expecting for a little while it has a very specific route that you need to follow mm, still 40 degrees we, we need to do a lot more terraforming wow Oops. I accidentally used global warming, but uh, actually that's kind of useful. It told me I could only use it once. It lied. What I actually wanted to do was use my leaf, but actually that's really helped me. I need to make this actually down to four so that it is sea level. It's helped me get the temperature up a bit more, which is what I actually wanted to do anyway. So that little accident with the controls actually helped. So it's 42 now, so we're gonna go back and fast forward things. I'm actually quite liking the way the sea's going now. I like the sea to be deeper in the middle and shallow on the edges. I just think that's a better aesthetic. And I also like my mountains to sort of be sort of gradual as well, but a little bit random at the same time. Seems to look nice, I think. So let's see what we get. The Velociraptors are doing well. But what I'm looking for is any kind of dino. Like a Stegosaurus. Anything like that, please. Anything new would be nice. Just holding the fast forward button. Give me something new. Eoraptor population is through the roof as well. I'm hoping that I'm not like missing something here. I worry that. Oh, look, we've got a new thing. Okay, let's go see what that is. 
not entirely the new thing I wanted, but it is a new thing. And the thing with the dinosaur age is that sometimes things have to happen in order. So it seems like a lot of these flying dinos need to happen before the bigger dinos happen. So that's cool. Don't run away. I want to capture you. They're very pretty, aren't they? Look how cool they are. So there are Mew and Stary. A flying dinosaur that differentiated from Eudemorphodon. It hunts for prey in prairies and appeared as Velociraptor was propagating on land. So I think we can carry on for a little bit and just see what else pops up after that. As the temperature goes up. Pteranodon! Let's go see what that looks like. I think that might be another flying one. Possibly. Whee, we're in the cube. Seem to be a few like, up this way. Oh, maybe it's a sea thing. Oh look, it's a, a coral again. That must be a coral that likes uh, the warmer water. Philip Sastre. Oh, I actually didn't see that uh, that popping up. A heliophyllum adapted for hot shallows. So obviously that likes it warm. Let's go back this way because I can see something flashing on the map over here. What is it though? There's some kind of little dinosaur down here. Archaeoraptor, an eoraptor that lives in hot, dry regions. Cool. They spawn because I have a little desert. <laughs> That's so cool. Right, okay, let's uh, go back out and see what else we can make before the end of the episode. If anything, things are definitely going extinct. We've got a new thing, Catamorphodon. These are very different things to what I had in my last playthrough um, and I think it's because of that accidental uh, global warming that just made it that little bit hotter. We're still within the birth conditions of what I, what I want. If I'm really struggling though, I'll lower the temperature by a degree or two. Just build some mountains and stuff. I like the, the global warming and the global cooling though, they're pretty cool. And I've got a few of them now. Right, so there was something that was new. I can see it flashing over here. Oh, it's a pretty cool little flyer. But of course, he's flying, flying over the water, so <laughs> I can't get him. Come back here, you. Okay, I got him now. In a very hot climate, you... Eudemorphodon underwent a mutation, changing its diet from fish to land-dwelling organisms. Cool. So you're like a desert. So we've got loads of the flyers. We've got tons of them. Let's see how many we've got of the flyers. If we go in the tree, maybe. See, this is the, the guy, and this is a a couple of... We're nearly at Pteranodon, actually. And this guy has feathers, so I imagine, yeah, once Tyrannosaurus goes on the land, I'm going to start getting birds, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, we've got a lot of the flyers, actually, which is uh, very, very good. Very interesting. There's a few more, but they seem to be starting to get towards bird form at that point. Okay, we'll stop looking at that and we'll carry on quickly. We want to see what else we get. We're going to get something, I know we will. Come on, this is good conditions for stegosauruses and stuff. I know you're on your way. Mm. There 
There we go. I knew there was something cool on its way. We have ourselves a Brachiosaurus. Yay! Look how cool he is! Now, if you guys are playing this for the first time, you'll get an achievement for getting him. But I didn't because I played it earlier and I was trying to work out how to get this. And if I hadn't played it earlier, it would have taken me like 4 million hours to, to get anywhere with it. So that's why I kind of want to know what I'm doing on this before I do it. Before I show you guys. Mind you, when I... If I do go and do a free play after this one, after the uh, the tutorial sort of mission based stuff, I will probably be a lot more free with what I do. I'll be a lot more like, let's do this and see what happens. Let's move time on and see what happens. And because of that, I think uh, I'll, I'll it'll just be a little bit more free, a little bit, a little bit more experimental, and I won't know what I'm doing all the time. But in this particular bit, I want to know what I'm doing so that I can show you all the cool stages and everything like that. Okay, I said I wouldn't do that, but it's like in a straight line, so it's not quite so wiggly. I want to pick up all these shinies off the floor. Okay, so there we go. So I think I'm going to end the episode here with a nice little picture of all my, my cool stuff, my cool flying uh, dinosaurs my Brachiosaurus, everything like that. Hopefully next time we will be able to get a little bit further. I'm going to be going towards the Stegosaurus if possible. I don't think we're going to be long off getting the Stegosaurus. Fingers crossed. Once you've got the Stegosaurus, Pleosaurus hopefully shouldn't be far behind. And then Tyrannosaurus. So we'll do that. And that will be the whole Age of Dinosaurs done in just a couple of episodes. So as you can tell, I'm pretty much, I am kind of rushing through this a little bit because um, I just want to show you all the features and then as I say, once we've done that, if you're still mega interested in the series and want me to do a completionist run, I might go back and do that. So there we go, that's it for today. I hope you liked the episode. If you did, then please leave me a like below. If you'd like to see more of uh, Birthdays at the Beginning, then please do subscribe and I'll let you know when the videos are out. I hope to see you next time. In the meantime, please look after yourselves and keep being awesome.